Do you want to stop throwing away your money for free? Do you end up having to save multiple rounds? Or maybe you're constantly unable to afford full buying weaponry? Well, today I'd like to cover some of the ways that you can start keeping your own economy in check. Having a good understanding on how the economy system works and how to play around it can allow you to win more rounds. I want you guys to come out of this video with a better understanding of the economy system and how to avoid some of the common pitfalls. From my experience, making economic mistakes can be the easiest thing to fix and can be a great way to help you win more games. What's up guys, my name is Matt and today I am going to be your own personal economic mastermind. It is going to be my pleasure to share with you a few useful ways to start paying attention to your economy which is going to better equip you and your team to win your Valorant games. No matter what happens in Valorant, you have control on how you spend and save your money, which can allow you to have a much bigger impact in each game. If you guys enjoy this type of content, make sure to comment down below which tip you found most interesting or useful. Also, if you feel like we missed anything, comment ways that you like to control your economy. Before we dive into this video, as always, we have our question of the day. How do you guys feel about character viability right now? You know, personally, I feel that agent viability is some of the greatest it's ever been. I love seeing teams utilize sageless comps, and it's interesting to see how different agents are getting played depending on the map as well as how they fit with people's playstyles. Even Rain has been getting more love as players are figuring out how to utilize her better. I do feel like Viper is one of the agents that is not getting a lot of love, however. So if any of you Viper fans feel the same way, let me know in the comments below. The most important thing to understand about the economy is having enough credits to purchase weaponry that can win your rounds. At 3,300 credits, you will be able to purchase half armor and a phantom or vandal. On the other hand, 3,900 credits will allow you to purchase full armor and the same weapon. By keeping those two credit values in mind, you can start ensuring that when your team decides to full buy, you're going to have enough credits to do the same. Now, of course, the crucial part is also having enough for utility if possible. If you have leftover utility that you haven't used in previous rounds, the 3300 and 3900 mark are a good standard to pay attention to. But when there is important utility you need to purchase, like Phoenix's Flash, Brim's Smoke, Cypher's Tripwire, Sage's Slow Orb, and so on, you're going to have to account for that credit value. So as long as you can afford proper weaponry and some important utility, you can still win the round. However, I see a common mistake that players make when they don't pay attention to this credit threshold and end up always on subpar weapons like the Spectre or the Bulldog. From my experience, you will almost always have a much higher chance of winning a round with a Phantom or a Vandal than a subpar weapon. You're going to want to be confident in yourself that by allowing purchases of better weaponry, you will naturally win more rounds. Purchasing bad weapons doesn't only make it more difficult to win those rounds, but it can turn into a kind of snowball effect where you just constantly don't have enough credits. A good rule of thumb is to save when your minimum credit value for the following round will be under 3,900. Something I don't see enough players purchasing is the Stinger. Although the Spectre is a better weapon in most scenarios, the Stinger is a great alternative, especially if you're going to purchase something like a Sheriff or a Bucky. Because of the 1000 credit cost, you can purchase Light Shields for 400 credits, which still puts it under the cost of running No Armor Spectre. On top of that, I found way more success with the Stinger over the likes of a Sheriff against full weapon purchases. The amount of times I've been able to come on top in a duel against a Phantom or Vandal with the Stinger is honestly absurd. It has an insanely high fire rate, and multiple shots to the head will pretty much make it impossible for them to hit accurate shots back due to the aim punch mechanics in the game. One downfall for the weapon is its low 20 round magazine. It makes it nearly impossible to get more than two kills in a single clip. But if you find that one versus one duel and come out on top, you've basically netted yourself a free weapon upgrade. For a 1000 credit weapon, I think it can go head to head in close range scenarios. That being said, the Sheriff is still a great eco weapon to purchase due to its one shot ability. However, try out the Stinger more often and see if it works for you as well. I honestly think it's a really highly underrated weapon and it can net you kills that you don't even expect are possible. So obviously being aware of the economy system is imperative, but what if I told you that certain agents actually allow you more flexibility with how you spend your credits? 
While there are certainly agents in the game that will often find themselves with more credits than others, let's take a quick look at a few and explain why there are great agents to play because of that reason. Starting off with one of my favourites, Omen. He is what I would consider to be the most cost efficient agent right now, and that's because the main utility that you're going to be using are his smokes, and they are completely free. You only have to spend 400 credits to buy the rest of his utility. There is no other agent right now that even comes close to this, as many of the ones that used to hover at the 400 to 500 credit range are now at 600. Now, I know what you're thinking, that's just a couple hundred credits, but those can rack up over many rounds and can easily allow you to purchase things that you can't with other agents. For example, Cypher is an agent that is incredibly expensive. Although his camera is a free utility, his main utility that is usually used is his tripwire. Often you'll be using both of those, so each round you're going to spend 400 credits at the very least, unless you manage to pick one of them up. On the flip side, it's very rare that Omen is going to use both of his teleports and his blind every single round, so you can save a ridiculous amount of credits. Just like Omen, Jet's free ability, her dash, is the main ability that she needs to function properly. Her ultimate also allows her to win eco rounds or purchase weapons for others as they are really strong in the right hands. Lastly, I think Killjoy is another highly cost efficient agent. Her turret is free and you essentially use them to cover multiple flank avenues for zero credits. Like I mentioned before, Cypher does not have this luxury and is often forced to use at least 400 credits worth of utility every round. On top of this, Killjoy's alarm bot can be recalled globally from any part of the map. You know, I can't think of how many times I've tried to pick up my Cypher tripwires, but I was too late or in the middle of another animation to pick them up. But Killjoy has none of those problems, which allows her to save a lot of credits. Be aware though that her entire kit is 600 credits, but because her alarm bot can be globally recalled and her turret is free, you'll often only be spending those credits on your Nano Swarm. If you want to start winning more games, these three agents are great by themselves already, but the economic freedom they can afford you is a great addition to that. Honestly, you are going to be surprised by how many more credits you'll end up having when compared to other agents that you play. After winning a pistol round and buying out weaponry like Spectres and Bulldogs, there is a concept that you should start implementing right away. Most people refer to it as bonusing. So essentially, you're going to decide to keep your weapons instead of upgrading them. What that allows is that regardless of the outcome of the round, you have the economy to purchase full weaponry in the next round. This is especially useful if few people lose their weapons in that previous round. I see far too many people upgrade to operators or phantoms and vandals when you can just play for the bonus. More often than not, you can at least kill a few of the enemy players, which hurts their economy considerably. Now, in the following round, you'll have full purchases while many of the opponents will be struggling to keep up. Winning this round now sets your economy up greatly and gives you more leeway to lose rounds and still afford to purchase full buys in the future. One simple trick to help you and your team's economy is recognizing when it's okay to save your weapon and hide. This is especially the case if you have an Operator or Odin as they are both very costly weapons that you are going to want to keep for as long as you can. Some scenarios to start paying attention to are the ones where a bomb is planted and you have a significant man disadvantage. If you or your team are down 3 to 4 players when a bomb is planted, then think about saving as it can help your economy for future rounds. I see way too many teams attempt to win 1 vs 5s, 2 vs 5s, or 2 vs 4s, when saving those weapons could greatly change the outcome of future rounds and possibly the end result of the game as a total. If you have trouble following the specific situations when you should look to save your weapon, give our website ProGuides a chance. Not only do we have great coaches that can help you out, but we also have a new VOD review system in place which helps you save time fixing your mistakes. Forcing, even after you lose the pistol round but manage to plant the bomb, is a popular tactic from other tack shooters like Counter-Strike. In this game, it's a largely underrated tactic as you can usually purchase Stinger armor or Spectre armor and can test the enemy team. Typically speaking, the enemy usually feels overly confident after winning a pistol round and can be caught out making simple mistakes. Because the bomb plant gives everyone on your team 300 credits, it just narrowly pushes you over to be able to afford the Stinger. Because you're on the attack side, a good coordinated push with Stinger armor will often overrun the opposition and net you a free round win. 
I highly suggest you start paying attention to these rounds as securing offensive sided wins are notoriously harder. Try this out in your next game when you lose the pistol round but manage to plant the bomb. Let me know how it worked for you or if you're already abusing this sick tactic. I previously mentioned how the Stinger is a great eco round purchase. Well, if your credits are tighter, the Ghost is a great alternative. At only 500 credits, I've gone toe to toe with full purchases and I usually find more success with it than the Sheriff. Not only that, it's 300 credits cheaper so you can afford to purchase light shields. You'd be surprised by how much value you can get out of Ghost Light Armor instead of purchasing a Sheriff straight up. Although it has that one shot capability, missing that shot usually spells a disaster for you. On the other hand, the Ghost may not have a one shot capability, but its quicker fire rate and the light armor that you can purchase will allow you to fire off multiple shots before dying. I think it's an easier weapon to use and coupled with light armor can allow for some interesting outcomes. At the end of the day, the economy system isn't actually too complicated. By paying attention to some of the pitfalls and tips today, you can start recognizing why you might be losing rounds that you shouldn't. Again, try using the Stinger and the Ghost more often as they are super underrated weapons. Finally, keep in mind how important bonusing can be and start trying to save weapons when the situation might look a bit dire. If there are any tips you feel helped, be sure to comment and tell us why. Additionally, if there is anything we missed, please let us know. We love to learn more too. That's all we have for this video. If you enjoyed the video, please like, comment and subscribe. To keep up to date with us, make sure to hit the bell notification button, which ensures that you stay up to date with our videos and ahead of the competition. If you want to learn more about anything Valorant related, head over to ProGuides.com for the best Valorant on demand coaching. Our coaches are among the very best and we hope you check them out if you enjoyed this video. They will help you with any of your individual Valorant needs and can bring you to the next level. And hey, if that's not your style, make sure to check out our Discord. We have a great community where you can chat, hang out, and possibly find friends to play with. Anyway, stay tuned for our future videos and keep up the grind, Pro Guides fam.